Continue with our service. Um, the uh, elementary Sunday school children will be singing and um, coming to give us a flavor of what um, is expected of homes, especially for fathers. Um, so happy watching and happy listening.
child in the way it should live it should train up a child in the way it should go and when it's it's old he shall not depart from it Proverbs 22 verse 6 We thank God for another year to celebrate all the amazing fathers out there. We would like to appreciate their love, care, prayer, more support, and their wonderful unconditional love. We pray that God continues to keep, bless, and grant them sufficient grace from above. This morning, my mate will present to you a short playlist called Christian Living. May God give us all Christian homes. Happy viewing. Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him This is Brad Justin Dean's family having a family devotion in their house Please can we open our Bible to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 and it says my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Please, Nathan, can you remind us of Sunday school title for this week? Very good. Please, can you tell us the manner of this week? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1. That was very good. And that ye may live long. Yeah, can you please pray for us? In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus, please guide us as we are about to go to bed. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Good night, Dad. Good night, Lord. Mr. Justin's wife taking children to bed. Why Brad Justin stays behind to pray for the family? He makes sure the house is secured before going to bed. Brad Justice and his friend, Brad Alex, are having a serious discussion about how a man should treat his wife. Brad Justin, you mean you help your wife at home? Of course I do. That's not man enough, my brother. You are the head of the house. In as much as you provide for the family, that's all. You are meant to help your wife at home. Whenever she's cooking, you help with the children's assignments, washing the dishes and the rest. And who has the time for that? I have, I have bills to pay, I have places to go, and I can't do my children assignment because, and they have to go to their mom because I need to go to work and I have my position to maintain and that's why your wife is aging so fast Wow! I can't believe my ears! What did you just say? Well, isn't that how it's supposed to be? Back to Brad Justin's home the children are doing their school work while Brad Justin comes back home with his friend Welcome, Dad. Did you remember to buy a chocolate? Sure. This is for you. This is for your sister. 
Thank you. Oh, what happened to you then? I'm not feeling too well. Oh, sorry. Let me give you some food so you can get better. <laughs> Let us pray. My wife is here by the strife of Jesus Christ. Mm. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Mm. Oh, that's how you do it. You're going to be alright there. Eh? Everything's going to be okay. Mm. Mommy, don't worry. We just prayed for you. Here we see four friends showing appreciation to their fathers while having fun at the playground. Let me tell you something. Do you know why I love my dad? Because he always provides for us and helps my mom in the kitchen at home. My dad does that as well. He buys me lots of goodies when he's coming back from work. I remember a time at school that I was asked to write about my hero. Guess who I picked? <laughs> My dad's a godly man and he's my hero. I hope I'll grow up to be like my father someday. What shall we say to our fathers? Thank, Thank you, fathers. We love you. Exercises chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole beauty of man. to this program it is well to remember our great God's command that you should train your kids in the way they should go do you teach your children the words of God has your family altered altered your family do you treat your wives with dignity and respect God will make you all a good role model now, in appreciation of our love, my mates will come and appreciate our fathers. God bless you. Amen.
Happy Father's Day. Very good morning to you all. Welcome to our devotional service for this special Father's Day. May God bless you for joining us. Amen. I want to appreciate those that are joining us online too. May God bless you. Amen. We are the Apostolic Faith Church and we are located at 13 Penu Road. DA53EP is our postcode and you'll be very much welcome to be in our midst should you be visiting in Bexley. I want to appreciate our children. That was a great presentation. May God bless them. Amen. And also our choir, which just sang to us, just, I just keep trusting the Lord by J.W. Patterson. As I was, tend to sing together, and we'll start with uh, number 11, CGS number 11, O Worship the King. Let's do verses 1 and 3. Brother Ayo is leading us. We sing again CH sixty-three. All creatures, all creatures of our God and King. All creatures of our God and King, CH sixty-three. CH 809, God of our fathers. God of our fathers. Okay. 
Sorry, we're going to have a short interval at the end of each verse, so please let's listen to the organist. Thank you. the fathers in the house. Amen. Amen. I want all the ladies to say amen to the fathers. Amen. God bless you. We sing uh, 574, a child of the king. All our fathers are children of the king, almighty. A child of the king, after the introduction. sing the last song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, because that is our circle. Yeah. We want to lean on that everlasting arm this morning, Amen. and God bless us as we do that. Amen. We sing verses 1, 2, and the last, 1, 2, and the last. In the last verse, we shall sing standing, and we shall be led in the congregation of prayers.
As we look up to God and remain standing, we call upon Brother Adebanji Alade to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful day like this. We thank you for all our fathers. Um, it is not an easy thing to be a father. The responsibilities are so immense. But we thank you that you have sustained them. And we thank you that you have kept them. And that though the arrows of the enemy hit sore against them, they thrive still. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. We thank you that they are in health. We thank you that they are spiritually doing well. And we thank God that their children had the opportunity this morning to show appreciation to what they are to them. It's our prayer today that God you will continue to uphold all our fathers. Amen. Keep them from all evil. Amen. Keep them from every attack. Amen. Help them to make heaven their home. Amen. And even in their individual homes, give them peaceful, godly homes. Amen. And help them to prosper. Amen. And help their children to prosper. Amen and help their wives to prosper. Amen. This morning, as we listen to your word, we want to pray that God, you save, Amen. you sanctify, Amen. you baptize, Amen. you heal, Amen. and all the people that might be watching all over the world that may be having a burden or two, that God, you relieve from every burden. Amen. Bless the choir. Amen. Bless everyone here today. Amen. Let us all go home rejoicing. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, happy Father's Day to all of us here. Yeah? May God bless you. Amen. Uh, we will meet again in the afternoon. Well, before I say that, I want to appreciate those that um, have come to visit us today. May God bless you. Amen. And uh, just to say, we do have uh, our minister, Brother Godwin Jimmy, uh, and his wife, Sister M.M., and their daughter, Hepsiva, with us. Brother Godwin will read the scripture reading for us. And they are from our Leicester branch, for those who may not know. Um, we'll meet again at 2.30 for... Uh, Father's Day activities, and I'm sure if before then, uh, as we uh, celebrate Father's Day, I'm sure our ladies have prepared something for every one of us, and want to thank God for that. Amen. So let's wait and see what they've done. I know they always get a challenge from men when they cater for them on Mother's Day, but it's their turn today, so let's see what they've done. Um, during the course of the week, Wednesday, we have our Bible study at 7.30 for those that meet here. But for those that meet in, in uh, Medway, it's on Tuesday, same time. Uh, just take note that this will be the last Bible study before our summer camp meetings. So we'll be praying for camp meetings going forward whenever we meet on Wednesday, starting with the Portland camp meeting. We also have our own soon after that. I also want to remember the, the worker come meeting, which will be coming soon after our own, and many others that will be coming in all places around the world. I want to pray that the presence of God be there, Amen. and that God speak to us and remind us to be ready in this pilgrimage that we are in. Amen. On Friday, we will have revival and evangelistic service starting at 8 p.m. I would want to encourage you to make time to attend. We don't always have uh, evangelistic revival services during the week, so take opportunity and make yourself available, and uh, you will surely be blessed by uh, being present for these uh, revival services. On Saturday, we do have a combined youth prayer meeting. It's a virtual one for all our branches in Western Europe, starting at 8 a.m. through to 10 a.m. 
If Jesus tarries next Sunday, we'll start with Sunday school for all ages at 10 a.m. And we'll have our devotional service as we're having now at quarter past 11 and uh, revival and evangelistic service at 5 p.m. Now we'll listen to the first choir anthem, Keep on Believing by F.C. Houston. And then after that, we have scripture reading that will be read to us by Brother Godwin Jimmy. is from uh, Joshua. Uh, then we're going to have this special song, which is a solo by Brother Itang, Savior Like a Shepherd by W.B. Bradbury. God bless you. Amen.
Our Bible reading is taken from Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, 
has loved us, love us still. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Joshua, where we read our scripture reading. Chapter 24, verse 15. Now therefore, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which the fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We want to, by the grace of God, talk about examples of godly fathers. Here is a father, Joshua. We know he was uh, the one that took over the lead of the children of Israel from the land of bondage, Egypt, where God, so now God uh, used Moses to take them from the land of bondage, Egypt, to the land of Canaan. And we all know that Moses did not cross over into the land of Canaan for the reason that God says he did not um, honor me or respect me at the waters of Meribah. Well, Joshua had been like assistant to Moses all the while, and God chose him to be the one who was supposed to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. So the first battle that we see him involved in was the battle of Jericho. And he crossed, he, he, they, they won that, that battle. God brought down the walls of the city in a miraculous way, gave them that victory, but he had a family. In all that he was doing, he also had a family. And we see that he is saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. That's a grand declaration from someone who is saying, I don't mind what everybody else does. Let them do, let them worship other gods. Let them do as they please. But for me and my house, who will serve the Lord. Amen. That is the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Mm. Thank God the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Mm. Amen. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did these great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. They knew that God did great things for them. Yes. And though Joshua gave them that challenge, he said, no way, we will also worship the same God whom you want to serve. May God help us in our time Amen. to say we will worship this same God of Amen. Joshua. Amen. Amen. There are many things that people worship in our days. and There are many forms of so-called Christianity, which is just a name only. 
and there's no substance in it by those who profess to be worshiping God. We want to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes. We want to worship God by way of experiencing salvation. So it's an also experience. And we live so because God has changed us. And may God give us fathers Amen. in our time Amen. who will be examples Amen. to those that follow after us as Joshua was to his family and to all those who were around him. Now, the family is as the smallest subset of our society. But it has power. Yeah. It is this family units that make up our society. Exactly. Yeah. It is the family units that make up our church. Yeah. Yeah. And if there is substance if there is holy worship of God in those family units, you'll find that our church will be a great church, mm. our society will be a great society, yeah. but if the family units are broken, we cannot have a better church than the families that are constituted in that That's church. True. That's true. It can only be an aspiration. Mm. But we want to thank God that by his mercy, this word of God is coming to us so that we look at ourselves yeah. and see ourselves as we are and pray to God that God help us Amen. to have Amen. victorious, Amen. functional Amen. families Amen. that worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. It was Joshua who was told these words in Joshua 1 verse 8. That this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. There is victory that we get and life that we get from the word of God. God showed the children of Israel the substance that is in his word to be similar to the manner that he gave them daily for the 40 years that they traversed the wilderness. They were supposed to get manna every day. Yeah. But Jesus, when he came, he said, as your fathers were given manna in the wilderness, I am the bread of life. Yes. Yes. This word of God gives us life. Yeah. Yes. It has all that it takes for us to be able to live a victorious Christian life. Yeah. Without it, it will only be a mercy, Christianity, with no substance. But may God help us to have real Christianity Amen. that is founded on the word of God. Amen. Amen. Says. Meditate. We need to read the word of God. Thank God we are exposed to Bible studies. We are exposed to Sunday school lessons. And we are supposed to learn and apply what we learn from that word of God. It says, meditate on it day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. It is one thing to know what is written in God's word, it is another to practice what is written. So may God give us the grace Amen. to be practical Christians. Amen. Bible practicing Christians. Amen. Amen. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. You know, we want to be prosperous. Yeah. Everybody wants it well in every way, yeah. in their workplace, in their home, wherever. We want things to be well with us. Yeah. Well, it will be well with us as long as we are set ourselves to do the word of God. Yes. Yeah. And not every success is good. 
there is good success. Good success has its foundation on God. In terms of being successful, there are many people that are perceived to be successful who are actually wrong, mod wrong role models for many because they are successful in material wealth, in fame, and not successful in knowing God and living by the precepts of the word of God. So we want by the grace of God to have examples that we learn from the word of God. Joshua is one of them. He was a great man of God. Yes. And where did this family start from? It's good to have the context right of what a family is. God ordained the family right from the Garden of Eden. And he said in Genesis chapter 2, 21 through to 24, and the Lord, Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God took, the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Let people say what they want. This is the origin of woman, taken out of the rib of a man. Yeah. The man was formed out of the dust of the earth. Yeah. God breathed his breath of life upon him, yeah. and he became a living soul. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's where we belong. Yeah. For the word of God tells us, in the beginning was God. Let people say what they want because they are people. After they have said everything they want to say, they go down to the grave by way of what God defined in his word. So may God help us to reflect and say we would rather follow God the right way. Amen. Do what God commands us to do for our ending will be well with him. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank God that the word of God is simple, plain, and straightforward. Yes. Anyone with a heart to want to do God's will can receive it. Yes. There is no qualification that is needed to know God's word. It's an open heart. And a desire to please him. And God will do it. Amen. Here is what God said in Genesis, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, talking of family. The man will leave, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Ask me how I am one flesh with my wife. I am here, she is there, we are one flesh. Yes. For those that are married, you are one flesh with your husband. Yes. Yeah. It is a mystery, God made it that way. Yeah. The things of God to this world are like foolishness, mm. but they are life to us that understand the word of God. Yes. So that's what God did. So it's one man for one wife, as the word of God tells us here. So a good marriage founded on the word of God, according to what God teaches us, is based on one man who fears God, getting married to a woman who fears God, bring those two Bible-believing, Bible-obeying Christians to marry each other, they will have a good success in their marriage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they all fear God. Yeah. They all do the will of God. They all want to have the word of God dictate to them how to conduct themselves, and surely they will succeed. Yeah. 
But if anyone, a man or a woman, gets unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, that's a wrong model for a functional Christian family. It doesn't work. So God made Eve for Adam. They had children, Cain and Abel. And their children had their children also. And it continued like that. But in their family, something happened. These people, Adam and Eve, we know they transgressed against God, and God gave them a remedy for their transgression by killing an animal and covering them up. There was a shedding of blood there. Yeah. And then from then onwards, God instituted the worship of God by shedding of animals, and they were doing it. We see that they were doing it by Abel copying what his dad and his mother would be doing because he wouldn't he would have known it from anybody else. But when Cain decided to offer the proceeds of what was not right, as far as God is concerned, from the ground, God did not honor his prayers. But the prayers of Abel, God received them. And then Cain was wroth with his brother. He was jealousy of the fact that God had answered his prayers. He slew his brother. May God deliver us from that. Amen. Amen. We want to teach our children to do the right thing. Yes. As these first, I'll say, people pleased God in their lives, they offered sacrifices to God, regardless of the fact that Cain did not do it right, Abel was doing it right. And I believe Adam continued to do it right. So may God help us to train our children to do the right thing. Amen. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yes. You know, training is training. And then implementing what someone has been trained to do is another thing. Have you ever wondered why? Probably we spend years in primary school and we even spend more in secondary school, even more university, being trained to be someone who can do at least one thing in life. But when it comes to the word of God, the Bible tells us that children should be taught the word of God from as early as possible. And when they are taught the word of God, they will not depart from it. Training takes courage. Yes. Because you have to say the same thing over and over and over again. Even after you have done that, you still have to say it again. So may God help us Amen. to have fathers who are patient Amen. to continue to teach their children Amen. what they should teach them in Amen. line with uh, what God expects us to teach them. In our day and age, I've seen babies given smartphones. Phones have become, uh, I would say, a way of keeping our kids quiet. But may God help us to teach them the word of God. Amen. May God help us to have time with them Amen. and not be exposed to things that probably they shouldn't be exposed to. We have another godly example, Noah. Noah was a man that feared God. Noah had a wife who feared God. Noah had children, three sons, who feared God. And these three sons had three wives that feared God. And it was a family of eight that feared God. When Noah was given an instruction to build the ark, 
they were part of it. Amen. They helped their father to do what God had commanded him. His wife and his sons and their daughters were in unison doing what God had commanded Noah to do. And you know what God did? God spared their lives. Amen. When the flood came, God was with them. Amen. Until the floods abated, they were in the ark protected. It's a symbol of what God can do to all of us when we with our families fear God. Me and my wife fearing God and my children fearing God. If we do that, God will bless us. Yeah. There is going to be a rapture. That's coming our way. As Noah's life was spared with his children and his sons, your life will be spared too if you fear God in the same way. Amen. You know, there was a lot of obedience in what Noah did. And his children followed suit. They had a specific tree that they were supposed to cut down and use to build the ark. They had specific pitch which they were used, they were, which they were supposed to use to put up or close up the gaps between the timber blocks that they were using to build the ark. I always imagine if they had done it their own way, this gopher tree was supposed to be a tree that can float in water. If they had decided to build an ark of stones. Was it going to float? No. No. May God help us to do what the word of God tells us to do. Amen. Precisely. Amen. Amen. One writer said, when the ark or when the tabernacle was built, it was built based on the instructions that Moses got directly from God. And God inspired the people that were used and selected to build the ark to do exactly as Moses had been commanded to do. It was a heavenly vision followed by obedience of those that had the spirit of God to do exactly what God wanted. Yeah. If they had not done so, the glory of God would not have come down True. after the ark, the building of the tabernacle was complete. It wouldn't have come down. True. So when we do exactly as what God teaches us to do in his word, the glory of God will be upon our families. Amen. And that will be evident. Amen. That will be evidence. The Bible actually says, by their fruit, ye shall know them. When we feed on the word of God, we produce, like produces like. Have you heard the saying that, like father, like son? If we feed on the word of God, meditate on it, we become like that word of God. We become the epistle, the letter that is written to the world by the spirit of God for the world to read. You can be one. I can be one. Yeah. Yes. Noah sought God. As the Bible tells us that we should seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. The temptation that the world faces and what many fathers or many parents may do is not to give their children the word of God, not to prioritize teaching their children the word of God, but to seek after all these things. If the energy that some of us put in training our children to have worldly education, if it was the same energy that we put in them understanding the word of God, there will be somewhere else. God will help us. Amen. So we don't want to seek all these things without the kingdom of God first. Noah was a blameless man. Titus 1, 6 to 7, it say, actually says, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not too soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Now, 
God demands that every man, regardless of our position in church, be blameless. Mm. Noah was such, and he found grace in the eyes of God. Mm. So we, we have a duty, we have a mandate to do what the word of God tells us to do. Abraham was another example. We all know how Abraham, in faith, followed after the word of God. He was called out to go to the land of Canaan from the land of the Chaldeans. And he did exactly as what God told him. He is actually an example of a father, physical father that obeyed God, as well as a spiritual father to the nations. Yeah. We become children of Abraham by faith because here is a perfect example of a godly father. You know, God actually said one thing about Abraham. He said in Genesis 18, 19, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and just judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Here is it. God actually, it's good to have this kind of recommendation from God himself. Yes. He was saying, I know Abraham, that he will teach his children the word of God. Can God say the same of me? Mm. Can God say the same of you? Mm. May, 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 may we pray that God help us Amen. to be Amen. like Amen. what he was. Amen. He feared God. He Amen. obeyed God. Amen. You know, against hope. He hoped that God was going to give him the son as promised. And God gave him that son. Yeah. Remember when he went to Mount Moriah with Isaac? He just did as God had commanded him. Early in the morning, go take your son. Go and sacrifice him for me. And he did exactly as what God told him. The interesting thing is Isaac knew what they would need in order to make, make sacrifices to God. And he challenged his father saying, we have everything. Where is the lamb? The wood, the fire, where is the lamb that we're going to sacrifice? Because he knew that he had always been going with his father to make sacrifices to God. And they'll be having a lamb for sacrifice. May we teach our children what is needed Amen. to worship this God Amen. and how to do it, Amen. how to build the altar Amen. in our homes Amen. as Abraham would do with Isaac. Amen. Thank God Isaac did not run away when he was supposed to be sacrificed. He did exactly as what his fathers would have wanted to do is the figure of Jesus Christ. Yes. He held the hood onto which he was supposed to be sacrificed on. Christ held the cross, the tree upon which he was slain. Whereas Isaac was figuratively represented by the lamb that was caught in the thicket, Christ, the lamb of God, paid the price for our redemption. Yeah. We have in Abraham an example of a perfect father that we can learn from, and I believe that God will help us. Amen. We also have Job. Job was a great man of God that feared God, and he not only feared God, but he did everything that he could to keep his family fearing God. He would even pray for his children. He knew when these children go out to have their birthday parties or whatever they would do. He was saying, in case they have sinned and cursed God, he would always make sacrifices for them. Do we pray for our children? Here is an example. Job chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them. 
and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. I like that. Yeah. He didn't just do it one time. He yeah. continued to do it. Yeah. 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 So we don't just walk this way as a hundred meter sprint. Life is a marathon. That's right. Yes. Yeah. We run from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Yeah. And may God help us Amen. to have these godly virtues that were in these fathers that we've learned about. To conclude, godly fathers have sacrificial love for their families. Bible enjoins us to love your wife. It says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Colossians 3.19 actually puts it this way. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Peter puts it this way. Likewise, ye husbands, that's 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. You know, the word of God is complete. God knew that we, men have to know their wives. So he's saying according to knowledge. That word knowledge embodies a lot. Women are different from men. Exactly. And that knowledge every man should have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In order to know how to dwell with their wives. Yeah. Yeah. According to knowledge. Yeah. Not just with their wives. If they have daughters, equally the same. You have to know them. Now it says, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Take not honor to the wife as unto a weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Mm. So we can pray prayers that are hindered, but may God deliver us from that. Yeah. We want to pray prayers that God will answer yeah. because we are living according to the word of God. Yeah. We help them yeah. in doing their chores. We help them. We help them taking children to school. We do other things. There are people that believe that certain things should be done by women only. We help them. We do everything that is necessary to keep our homes going. Yeah. The husband is responsible sacrificially to provide for his home. It is necessary to look after, defend your family. God expects us to do that. Yes. Ours is to love as Christ loved the church. I'm sure we can ask God today, all men, to help us. Amen. There are many Amen. more examples Amen. of godly men in the Bible Amen. that we can talk about. But from these few that we have learned, we want, by the grace of God, come to these altars and say, God, if we have not been doing it right, give us the grace Amen. from today onwards to follow after the examples that we have in the word of God. And God will bless us. If you need to be saved, God can save you. Need to be sanctified, God can do the same for you. God can heal you of your sickness or disease. If you come forward to pray as we sing the closing song.
Heavenly Father, we thank you. You have reminded us again the duties of fathers. Lord, give us the enabling grace. Amen. Give us the grace from above Amen. that we will be able to do our duties Amen. and be pleasing to God yes. that God can vouch for us. Amen. For I know him. He will train his children. For I can vouch for him. Lord, do it for us, oh Lord. The grace, the enabling, the all the necessary requirement, salvation, sanctification, baptism of good ghost, consecration, and hearing from God what duty we need to do to support our wife, to support our children, to do it that God may vouch for us. Give it to us, Lord. Help us, Lord. As many as have not got this qualification in them, Lord, today, give to them, oh Lord. Those of us that have claimed it, don't let us resent. Don't let us go back. Help us to go forward and consecrate more that at the gate of heaven. When they ask, where are your children? Where is your family? We can say, here they are. Do it for us, oh Lord. Help us, Father. And all the activities, remaining activities of today, take perfect control. For we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. 